The story of Nathan's famous hot dogs is one of American entrepreneurial spirit, with some pretty weird marketing gimmicks thrown in for good measure. From hot dog-loving gangsters to dead whales and secret recipes, here's everything you didn't know about these famous Franks. I do a great impression of a hot dog. Hot dogs might not exactly be expensive food, but when they're being sold for next to nothing, people tend to raise eyebrows. At least that was the case when Nathan Hanverker launched his hot dog business way back in 1916. Hanverker was working in Coney Island at the upscale eatery Feltman's, and they sold their hot dogs for 10 cents. After being persuaded to strike out on his own and sell a Frank made with his own recipe, Hanverker launched his hot dog stand with the wieners being sold for 10 cents as well, though they were quickly slashed to just 5 cents. Perhaps unsurprisingly, crowds were suspicious as to why these hot dogs were so much cheaper than Feltman's. To get people on board with the 5-cent Franks, Hanverker hired men in white jackets to hang around his stand and eat hot dogs. People believed the men were doctors from the nearby Coney Island Hospital and soon began buying the nickel Franks. The gimmick made people think that if these cheap hot dogs were good enough for doctors, then they must be all right to eat. That's delicious! Mmm! This is a perfectly sane food to eat! When Nathan celebrated its 100th anniversary, they had 5-cent hot dogs once again, though no big doctors were needed to sell them this time. Nathan Hanverker never claimed to be the inventor of the hot dog. That uniquely American food is generally attributed to Hanverker's former employer, Charles Feltman. Nathan Hanverker's hot dog stand may be what New Yorkers instantly think of when somebody mentions a Coney dog, but it's something entirely different to people in Michigan and the rest of the Midwest. In Michigan, Coney Island has little to do with New York, but instead it's a reference to the hundreds of diners across the state that serve Greek food and hot dogs smothered with chili, onions, and mustard. To them, that's the Coney Island dog or Coney dog. So how did the name Coney Island hot dog come to prominence in Michigan of all places? Well, at the turn of the 19th century when Greek immigrants came to the United States, many of them passed through New York and visited Coney Island before moving westward. These immigrants took the hot dog, added chili, and dubbed it the Coney Island dog. It wasn't long before diners popped up in Detroit with names like the iconic Lafayette Coney Island and American Coney Island Girls. Words are, well, like hot dog. Hamburger. No, hot dog. Hamburger. Hot dog. Hamburger. No. Nostalgia can be a powerful thing, and it's always a little disappointing when you go searching to find that special something isn't quite what you remember. Fortunately for all you hot dog fans, that's not going to be the case when it comes to a Nathan's Famous Hot Dog. The hot dogs today are going to taste the same as when your great-grandfather might have had one a century ago. When Nathan Hanverker launched his hot dog business, he did so with his wife's grandmother's recipe. The recipe was different than competitor Feltman's Red Hot Dogs, and it stayed relatively unchanged since 1916. Longtime Nathan's employee Bruce Miller told Daily News, "...it's a special formula that we use. It's very important to the flavor. It has a bit of garlic undertone, a very different flavor from other hot dogs." The only change is that the hot dogs are now gluten-free, and this was accomplished without altering the Frank's flavor. As for the spices in the recipe, obviously, it's a closely guarded secret, but it all comes together when blended with beef and water at a high speed in the company's Cincinnati plant. How good are they? So good you'll almost want to drink the hot dog water. Well, maybe not. No, no, put that away. When it comes to iconic American foods, the hot dog is certainly one of the standouts. And the annual Nathan's Famous Hot Dog Eating Contest is an Independence Day tradition. Joey Chestnut may be the superstar of the contest in the modern era, but it actually launched way back in 1916 as a stunt to drum up publicity and patriotism. It's believed that the very first Nathan's Famous Hot Dog Eating Competition took place July 4, 1916, when four immigrants got into a debate over who was more patriotic. Being that Hanverker was a Polish immigrant himself, a hot dog eating contest was the perfect gimmick to create some business buzz. The four immigrants set out to prove who loved their new country more, and in the end, Irish immigrant James Mullen emerged victorious after consuming 13 hot dogs in 12 minutes. Mullen's 12 dogs may be nothing compared to Chestnut's record 74 hot dogs, but hey, every patriotic food eating contest has to start somewhere. And once this one started, it only got bigger and bigger and bigger. It might seem surprising that a hot dog eating contest can draw as many viewers as a popular TV show, but then again, watching somebody eat 60-plus hot dogs in a matter of minutes is quite the spectacle. Who knows how many folks gathered around to watch the first Nathan's Famous hot dog eating contest, but the modern version seems to be growing every year. Around 1,700 hot dogs are prepared for the contest, and between 30,000 and 40,000 people show up to Coney Island to get a first-hand account of the event. Those numbers are small potatoes compared to the TV ratings it brings in. For the last 16 years, the contest has been broadcast on ESPN and pulls in between 1 and 1.5 and million viewers. A century ago, who could have predicted watching a group of people shove as many hot dogs as possible into their faces would become such a popular summertime attraction? No, it's not a joke, man. This is a joke. I'd say you'd see the movie about the hot dog. It's an Oscar wiener. 
Of course, the event also means big business for the original hot dog stand. And over the 4th of July weekend, it's not unusual for them to sell 18,000 hot dogs to hungry visitors. Nathan's Famous claims to have sold over 500 million hot dogs since its founding. And while those numbers might not be quite as high as the McDonald's hamburger count, some pretty famous folks have enjoyed a Nathan's hot dog. Comedian Jimmy Durante was one of the men who suggested that Nathan Hamburger strike out on his own, and the hot dogs have remained popular with entertainers in the years since. Actor Cary Grant used to buy the cheap hot dogs for lunch when he worked on the Coney Island boardwalk as the then-unknown Archibald Leach. And singer and actress Barbara Streisand is also a fan of the iconic hot dogs. The flavor of Nathan's Famous also seems to know no social bounds, and has been popular with both notorious gangsters and American politicians. Gangsters Bugsy Siegel and Al Capone were both reported to be fans of the hot dogs, and Franklin D. Roosevelt chose to serve Nathan's hot dogs to Britain's George VI and his wife Queen Elizabeth at a 1936 lawn party. In more recent times, Bernie Sanders and REM frontman Michael Stipe shared a Nathan's hot dog together during Sanders' 2016 presidential run. These days, hungry New Yorkers can get to the original Nathan's Famous Hot Dog Stand in Coney Island relatively easily, and have their choice of four subway lines that will take them there. When Nathan Hanverker started his modest hot dog business, though, that wasn't the case, and Coney Island was much more of a trek for New Yorkers. Prior to the extension of the NYC subway to Coney Island, Manhattanites would take a rail car or steamboat to make the long trip out to Coney Island. This all changed, though, when the subway extended down to Coney Island in 1920 and brought mass transit to the popular tourist destination. People were able to get to the area much faster than before, and Nathan's Famous was ready and waiting for them when they arrived with hot franks on the grill. According to National Geographic, when the subway came to Coney Island, Hanverker's business boomed, and Nathan's Famous was selling around 75,000 hot dogs to visitors every weekend. Nathan's Famous has certainly built a reputation throughout its history for using clever marketing gimmicks. As successful as the phony doctors and hot dog eating contests were in getting customers in the door, they don't even compare to the weirdness that was Nathan's 1954 dead whale stunt. The gross spectacle all went down while Nathan Hanverker was away on vacation in Miami and left his son Murray in charge of running the Coney Island business. Conveniently or not so conveniently, it was then that Murray Hanverker was approached by a man who claimed that he was in possession of a dead whale and thought it would be a good marketing tactic for the hot dog vendor. Obviously, a 75-foot-long dead finback whale that weighs 70 tons has a way of grabbing people's attention, and the idea was that people would come to look at the dead whale and then buy a hot dog to eat, assuming they didn't lose their appetite first. An agreement was struck up, and the embalmed remains of the giant sea mammal headed to Nathan's famous hot dog stand on a flatbed truck for all of Coney Island to gawk and stare at. However embalmed the whale's carcass may have been, it wasn't enough to mask the smell of 70 tons of rotting whale, and it had the opposite effect Hanverker had hoped for. People didn't rush to Nathan's to buy hot dogs and instead filed complaints with the health department. Whoops. Ground! That's it! Ground! <laughs> I wonder if it'll be friends with me. Hello, Ground! There ain't no party like a Nathan's Famous Party, and the hot dog vendor celebrated the end of Prohibition in a seriously big way. The restaurant owns one of New York City's oldest beer licenses, and when Prohibition came to an end in 1933, Nathan Hanverker decided to mark the occasion by offering up as much free beer as people could drink. That's a challenge that's not taken lightly, and people went through a ton of beer. Nathan Hanverker's grandson Lloyd Hanverker told 13, he obtained one of the first post-prohibition permits to sell beer out. He made a deal with King's Brewery, the major local supplier, just cranking up legal production on Pulaski Street in Brooklyn, took over Anna Singer's custard stand and gave out free mugs of beer. According to the Brooklyn Daily Eagle, it was quite the celebration, too, and Nathan's Famous served up some 80,000 glasses of free beer to its customers, who presumably bought quite a few hot dogs in the process. You can still get a beer at Nathan's to help wash down your hot dog, just don't expect it to be free. Any brand that's been around for a century is going to take its product and image pretty seriously. And Nathan's Famous is no different. Any hot dog entrepreneurs who are thinking about riding Nathan's coattails to success would be wise to think otherwise. In 2018, a Manhattan hot dog vendor and former Nathan's Famous employee found himself in legal hot water when he attempted to rip off the brand's name. Samir Ibrahim had worked at Nathan's but was fired for failure to meet company standards and soon opened up a hot dog cart with the not particularly original name Nathan's Famous Hot Dogs. While Ibrahim was busy serving up hot dogs just 13 blocks away from a legitimate Nathan's Famous vendor, he soon found himself being served with a lawsuit. The suit alleged he not only copied the name but the presentation. Script lettering, green color, swirl underneath. Ibrahim told reporters that he didn't think the lawsuit was that big of a deal, but had decided to remove the lettering because it, quote, didn't make a difference in his sales, and was presumably causing more trouble than the hot dog vendor wanted to deal with. With an annual revenue of $360 million and a century-old reputation to uphold, you can bet that Nathan's isn't about to tolerate any imposters who want to capitalize on their wieners. <laughs> Hot dog! Check out one of our newest videos right here! Plus, even more MASH videos about your favorite stuff are coming soon. Subscribe to our YouTube channel and hit the bell so you don't miss a single one.